Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we uh, take you through now uh, what's going to be happening first off uh, for the weekend. We know that we're going to get this shot of cold air. You can see the upper trough here. And by the way, this is the northern hemisphere kind of looking at it from the top down. So this is the Arctic, and you can see right through here is the same old complex vortex that's all locked up near the poles. This was a very interesting weather run all the way around, but let me take you through it. First off, here comes the ridge again in the east as we uh, head into uh, Christmas Eve. And then there it is, uh, very strong. We'll have uh, maybe some overrunning rain on Wednesday till the warm front gets through. Then we get the cold front, but not really too much energy with all this as it runs up into Canada. We still have a west-southwest flow after it goes by <clears throat> and then the ridge pops up again but kind of gets flattened out because we have a bit of a split here the northern stream you see the southern system weak uh, upper air system moving into the western lakes so we're now uh, going into uh, the weekend after christmas but start watching now up here up in the arctic what happens you see this bridge it starts to build across europe and over time watch what happens the vortex is up here uh, at this level, at the 18,000 foot level, split as higher pressures build across the poles, which I thought was pretty interesting. And you can see it here at the end of the period. There's a deep trough right down the, the middle or maybe a little bit to the right of the middle. And then you have a ridge that builds up in the west. Uh, you have higher pressures building up across the poles, a vortex that winds up going back down into Siberia, and then a <clears throat> polar vortex that moves uh, into just north of northern, northernmost Hudson's Bay at the end of the period. I, I don't know what to really make of this and how real this is because we know how this model loves to do this uh, every few runs, but we'll uh, take it for what it's worth. And this, by the way, would take us right just past New Year's to about January 3rd. So I'm going to just change... Um, looks here so you can see a little better uh, what happens this is at the end of the period uh, when we were talking about which is january 3rd uh, we'll go back uh, to the very beginning and i can run it through you again you can see here's our cold air for the weekend and we have this next weather system back through here that's going to be setting us up for wednesday into thursday how warm it gets on christmas eve by the way is going to depend uh, really on the warm front and how far north it gets because it's going to initially get pinned down just to our south so we're going to have an onshore flow here on Wednesday and uh, I think we're going to get that warm front through here and temperatures on <clears throat> Christmas Eve will probably get close to record highs now or if not break record highs and you can see that ridge really doesn't go away off the southeast kind of gets flattened out a little bit uh, early in uh, the week as we go toward New Year's and pops up again and then after that, uh, you, you've got this trough and this vortex that suddenly appears in northern Hudson's Bay. So I mean, clearly for you winter lovers, this is not a, a, a perfect look uh, in the scheme of things, but it is a better look than what we've been having. Uh, the uh, upper low kind of shifts down south, of the Alu south and west of the Aleutians. You get ridging up in the west and along the west coast. And you still have a ridge here in the east, but um, kind of interested to see if this winds up being the case uh, with regards to uh, what's happening at that level. So I'm going to jump back now. We're going to just take another quick look at that high level of the atmosphere because we've been talking about the stratosphere and we can see what's been happening uh, from this respect. Still waiting to see whether this is going to split in any way, this big up or low. In the stratosphere uh, and you can see it which kind of rotates moves southward toward greenland and then toward the end of the period you know it begins to stretch to some degree and you can see how it's all stretched out and maybe some kind of little vortex there trying to form over uh, northwestern greenland again how these trends set up we keep seeing this on every run every run it seems gets pushed back a little bit so how it plays out in the long term, I'm not sure. But uh, we know for sure that the weekend is going to be cold here. We may actually have a day of near normal temperatures. And 
let me just go back to the surface map. I'll go to something really close so we can take a look at the play for next week. And I'm going to shift back to the beginning. Okay, there's our cold front that just went through. And here comes the cold air for Saturday. And by Sunday, the core of the cold, cold air is already long gone. Weak front comes through Monday night, a shower with that. And the air behind it's pretty mild. And here's the warm front right through here as we go into Wednesday evening. And then here's Christmas Eve with a strong south-southwest flow and very warm air. I mean, clearly all the way up into uh, New central New England, we have some warm air. The warm front's probably pinched up right in there. And we're in the definitely in the warm sector. We get a few showers. Now, there's some kind of renegade wave here for Christmas Day. I don't know if I believe that. So I'm not going to really pay too much attention to it. And then beyond that, it, the weather is dry going into the weekend after Christmas. So uh, we'll uh, take a look at this again later today and see what the uh, day runs do. And uh, we'll digest it with the European models and all the other models when they come out in just uh, a few hours and go over this again in the morning. So have a good day and a good Friday.